Lights are one of the first things we think about when setting up a camper and definitely something worth upgrading in an older camper van or motorhome. So keep watching while we talk about things to think about when picking the right ones and try out what I think are one of the easiest and best value options available. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. Adding lighting to a camper could be as easy as a torch or a stick up a battery powered light. But most people do want to go a bit further and add some permanent lights powered from the leisure battery. If you haven't already and have any doubts on how the 12 volt system can work, you can check out my video on basic camper van electrics by clicking up here or using the link in the video notes. But now let's start by taking a look at the different types of lights you can get. Historically 12 volt halogen and fluorescent tube lights have been used in campers and caravans. Whilst these work perfectly well, halogens are not very efficient as most of the power they use turns to heat rather than light and fluorescents, although better, give a harsh light and can't be dimmed. That's why most if not all vans now have LED lighting which use a lot less power, are more robust and give a more flexible choice of brightness and colour than fluorescent. You can get a wide range of LED solutions from inserts for old halogen lights to convert them to LED, standalone LED lights, LED strips and LED surface mount units. With any lights you get it makes sense that they are native 12 volts rather than messing around using a USB socket and USB voltage lights. The next thing to think about is how you will switch them on and off. Standalone lights tend to have a switch on the unit, LED strips and down lights will probably need a separate switch wired in. Personally I prefer to put a switch where I want rather than having to move or reach up to the light itself but that usually involves running more cables. Don't forget that for safety anything you connect to the 12 volts will need to be appropriately fused as near to the power source as possible. One of the easiest ways to add permanent lighting with a conveniently positioned switch is this setup from Banggood. In full disclosure Banggood sent these to us to try for free but they have no editorial control over what we say. As always we're keen to give a balanced view on the product to help decide if it's right for you. They are available in different size sets. Here we have a set of four. You get the power lead, connector block and four lights, which are available in either warm or cool white. But the best bit is in this little bag. In here we have the remote control and the receiver unit. That's nothing new you may say, but having used a number of infrared remote controlled lights which often clash with other remote controls so when you change the TV volume the lights go out I'm very happy to say this is a radio frequency or RF remote which avoids that interference. To demo the lights I'm going to use a 12 volt output on our jump start compressor and power supply. You can see the review of this in the link up here or in the video notes. The lights themselves feel well made and come with both screws or sticky pads to mount them. Connecting up the lights is just a simple matter of plugging each of them into the connector block, then connecting the 12 volts to the receiver and the receiver to the connector block. The remote can be used to switch the lights on and off. Set them to 25%, 50% or 100% brightness on shortcut buttons or manually alter the brightness up and down with the dimming buttons. The slight flicker you see is a consequence of the video and to the human eye isn't visible. If you ever wanted it you can also make the lights strobe in different patterns if you want to. 
Another advantage of the fact that it's an RF remote control rather than infrared is that unlike infrared remotes it doesn't need to be able to see the control box or have a clear line of sight between it and the remote. You could leave the remote loose or stick it up literally anywhere you want to have your switch. Having fitted a few different lights and switches in my time these are probably the most flexible and functional, but still really easy to install and at what I would say was a bargain price. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.